Um, hello and welcome to Love Bites 2007. Um, so our next artist talk this evening is by Caroline Locke. Um, Caroline's practice involves a number of different media, uh, which includes publicly cited work, waterworks, video installations, sound, and performance. She's exhibited nationally and internationally, and often works in Australia. Um, she's well known for interdisciplinary work and has been described as one of the UK's most interdisciplinary, innovative interdisciplinary artists. Uh, this evening she'll be introducing and talking about her past and current work. Thank Caroline. you. Thanks very much. Um, I'm pleased to be here. Thanks for coming. Um, I brought this little device with me today because um, it hasn't been out for a while and uh, I decided that it needed a bit of an airing. So um, it's actually the mechanism for one of my installations. It's a trigger system and the reason why it hasn't been out for a while is because I'm doing everything digitally now it seems like most other people and uh, it's, it's, it's a, a, a movement that's kind of taken a few years but I'll talk a bit more about that mechanism and um, also the way I use new technologies and old technologies in my work. Um, we've been talking a lot about this device actually and also uh, former works of mine where I look at domestic technologies. I spent a lot of time in the 90s uh, rewiring um, domestic appliances and um, turning record players backwards by reversing the polarity and trying to make hoovers suck instead of hoover and trying to reverse the direction that a washing machine spins its load and um, working with fans and I was just a bit obsessed with old technologies particularly dom domestic um, technologies and um, Nicholas was kind of intrigued by this and he was also um, intrigued with this machine that, um, uses old technology really to trigger an installation system. Whoops. Um, and he was asking me about this installation. I was talking about rhythm and uh, the, the way that I was trying to explore rhythm and relate that to life and relating to a kind of body cadence and the fact that life exists around thousands of tiny rhythms and uh, that's the core of everything, silent rhythm. And I thought that that related very directly to me showing people the sight of sound, which is what I started doing with this work, breath. Um, so I was interested in talking to Nicholas a lot about making the invisible visible. Um, and that's where my current work, Hydrophonics, has its roots in um, this idea of looking at rhythms and silent rhythms. So, Nicholas' um, reaction to this, and I'll just read a little bit from this brochure. He said, um, in a way I find this all very welcome because a lot of cultural theorists have said that since the 1890s, 1890, sorry, Let's see, the text is in white, which isn't very helpful. Um, sorry. Nicholas' response to me talking about rhythm says, um, he says, in a way I find all this very welcome because a lot of cultural theorists have said since the 1890s that once we live in a mechanical world, we lose contact with our own identity and that somehow machines alienate us from a sense of how and what we are. And what you seem to be demonstrating is the way in which the orchestration of machines and other materials actually allow us to amplify our own self-awareness. This is um, the industrial with spin dryers. I turned the motor around the other way so that the spin dryers stood on these plinths like a sort of monolith and they threw their loads in opposite directions. And, uh, inside there were garments which had eros and saw written on the front and the back. And then over the top of the um, spin dryers there was um, a film loop, Super 8 film loop, of a man spinning 
in one direction and a woman spinning in, in the other. And at times they kind of um, linked up and other times they kind of span off at tangents. Um, uh, kind of obvious domestic kind of connotations really. Uh, this was an, another piece called uh, Bad Noise where I reverse the direction of a, um, a record player. And initially I just did it with an old record player that I didn't want anymore. And I just um, reversed the polarity on the wiring. And the, uh, the deck was a bit slow and the speed was all wrong, so I had to put another um, speed control in there as well. It started to look a bit ugly and clumsy and uh, I got a shot off it once. <laughs> and I kind of thought, hmm, it's a bit dodgy. And uh, at that time, Vestax had just released this new deck uh, which had a button on it for reverse, uh, reversing the turntable. So I wrote to them and they sponsored me and gave me two decks, which was good. Um, so it meant that I could just press the buttons rather than do all this dangerous stuff. Um, so that was good. And, and also, one of the, well, it was a great opportunity I had. I went, uh, Abbey Road Studios also uh, sponsored this project, and I was able to go down to Abbey Road Studios and get some, get some records mixed and mastered in studios. It was, uh, it was amazing. And Chris Levinsky he was a bit of a hero of mine because he used to produce the damned, um, actually mixed and mastered all the soundscape, which um, is something that's really kind of, I think this is really exciting. So um, that's Bad Noise, and I continue, I've just recently done another Bad Noise track. Generally I work with other musicians, and um, we basically compose a track that is only complete, complete when you play one record of it forwards and the other record backwards. So it's the same track cut onto two discs, one forwards and one backwards and then it creates a whole. So two opposites working together to create a whole. Um, back to Maelstrom, it kind of extended into a five tank version and um, I also did a version for Nottingham Castle and um, we landscaped the side of the uh, terrace and built the Maelstrom tanks into the terrace. So as you walk down the steps you see the, you watch the water going in opposite directions. And again, I, I, um, I didn't treat the steel because I wanted it to rust over time and I was hoping that perhaps the um, water would etch in the direction that it was going and it did, so I was quite pleased with that. And you, you, you can't really see from these pictures but you can kind of see the direction. Even when I, I do, um, I make video work, there's always, um, well, generally a, a mechanism involved in the process. So, um, we're going back to breath again. Um, yeah. um, this is some footage from the very early days of it, when it was called Green. <laughs> um, and this is one of the first times that I began to send sound through water. And um, use the uh, frequencies of sound to um, enliven the surface of water. to the left and then his hand would glance to the right and their gaze would meet and there were loads of moments like that sort of syncopated um, movements. Um, under each video projection is a steel pool and um, 
the pool reflected the video in, image. So as you're walking past, you see a beautiful still um, reflection. And then every now and then, the, the surface of the water is distorted by um, a motor that I've put on the side of these tanks. So still waters turn to turbulent waters.